So uh, remember, in the algorithm itself, we get this testing data point, right? And the first step of the algorithm is you compare that testing data point to all of the training data points. Right? Now, if you look at it, you might ask, well, why do we need to do that? Right? Why is that necessary? Why don't we just compare it to things that are nearby? Um, and the reason for that has to do with uh, our brain, our human brain, making certain inferences really, really easy for us and really, really difficult for a machine. So when you look at this picture, right, and if you know that this is the testing point, and if you need to find three nearest neighbors, you're not going to compute the distance between that guy and that guy, right? You don't need to, because you, know you know what the nearest neighbors are, right? And the reason you know uh, what the nearest neighbors are is because you have this awesome thing in the back of your head called the visual cortex. And that is awesome at picking out certain things like proximity of uh, something to something because we needed it when we were running around chasing dinosaurs or they were chasing us. Um, so you can instantly pick out nearest neighbors from a two or three dimensional space. Right? This is what you see. The machine on the other hand sees the same data set like that. Okay. So that's our testing point, and these are our training points, and the goal is to find the three nearest things from that to that. Right? So how do you do that? And once you look at a problem this way, like a machine does, it's not nearly as obvious what the three nearest neighbors are. So um, in general, if you're, if you're in a low dimensional space, if you're in 2D, uh, there, are some, uh, there are some algorithms for doing this efficiently. But if you're in, a, uh, in an n-dimensional space, there is no trick. There is no method that allows you to select three nearest neighbors exactly and accurately. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to actually take the seventh floor and one by one compute distance between that and that, that and that, that and that, and just enumerate um, all the distances. And that is expensive because for a data set of size n, it will require n computations of distance. And each distance computation is going to take d operations, because how, that's how many dimensions that you have. So your complexity is n d, and that is the testing time complexity, not training. KNN has zero training time complexity. But it's very expensive uh, at testing time, especially if you have lots of data. And you want to have lots of data, because lots of data allows you to build accurate classifiers. Um, so how do, you, how do you make it fast? <clears throat> uh, there's basically two things you can do, right? The complexity is nd, so you could either try to make d smaller. Uh, that's called dimensionality reduction. You're trying to uh, reduce the number of attributes, right? And here, you're basically limited to very, very simple methods. So you can use feature selection, basically throw away attributes that don't look promising. Anything more complicated, um, so if you... If, if you if you, were, if you want to run a factor analysis to reduce the dimensionality, factor analysis itself is typically cubic in D. So uh, you'd be wasting time trying to do that. That would take a lot more uh, time to compute than that, um, um, unless you are low dimension uh, already. Um, so a more promising thing is to try to reduce n. n is the number of examples that you have. So the basic idea is you approximately pick m out of n instances, and then you do the comparison within that smaller set m, and you pick your near nearest neighbors out of that subset. So, uh, so your complexity is going to be md, uh, where m is as big as you pick it. Right? So how can you, uh, how can you do that? Uh, and how you pick the smaller number of items, it depends on what kind of data that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with low dimensional data and <laughs> and your data is real valued, so you're in continuous low D space. Um, there's a technique called KD trees, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. Um, and uh, so you, uh, you're going to reduce the complexity. It only works for low D, and it only works for real valued data. If you're in a high dimensional space and your data is sparse and discrete, then you want to use inverted lists, which is a totally different technique. And then there is a generic technique that works for many things, fingerprinting, but I'm not, um, uh, we're, not gonna, we're not going to talk about that. So. Um, KD trees and fingerprinting are approximate. Uh, what's meant by that is they can miss nearest neighbors. Uh, inverted lists is an exact technique. You're always guaranteed to get your uh, nearest neighbors.